Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. I am Charles Lewis, show internet marketing specialist. Welcome back to another fun-filled edition of our podcast. This is podcast number 245. We are broadcast live from Houston, Texas. We, yes. we go up on a lot of things. I think we should go Houston, Houston Texas. Texas. Ooh, that sounded good. <laughs> As always, there is a tip from our previous podcast, and that tip is make sure the type of content you have supports the type of site you have. Meaning, is it a lead generation, informational, e-commerce? Exactly. The problem is a lot of people had these ideas and they dive right into website development and start publishing all this content, posting all these things, but it's not really consistent right. with what they offer or the type of site you have. And who they're targeting. Yeah. Exactly. For example, maybe you provide tons of information, I don't know, about healthcare and laws and rules and things like that, uh, but your site isn't conducive to that. Your site may be filled with ads and different products and things like that you have to sell well then your site is a little different from what you actually do and so if indeed that's the case i would suggest you redesign your site come up with a separate site that focus on those products but whatever you do make sure and this is key right. make sure that that the product you're offering if it's information right that your site is informational right that people can download this information that that information is accessible on their mobile devices um, and so that way you keep consistent with what you actually offer i don't want any confused sessions yeah you're like helping your analytics in the middle of the internet guy i don't know is this informational is it sales why is it, am i here there's an yeah. ad yeah we we call it a, the drop test and it comes from old print marketing if you drop something on the floor why would you pick it up right mm. a piece of literature uh marketing and the same should be from your website pull yeah. back push your chair away from your desk mm -hmm. look at your website and say why first two things why would i want to interact with this site and two, what do I want do. my user to do first? Exactly, and it's kind of cool because we'll be talking about uh, content and things like that today. So, uh, so we'll go into that a little bit further. Excellent. Please remember, we are your friendly local neighborhood top position snatchers. Yes. Where our mantra is: Don't be a douche. It is not a good look. Not if a good you look can, at all. Chuck has a device in his hand that has the ability to, to do exactly what I'm doing right now. I am tweeting. What am I tweeting, Chuck? It's a great question. I'm tweeting. Hashtag is right behind me. SEO podcast. This is number two forty-five. Uh, so I want you to do the same. But when you do it, be sure to tag us in it at Best SEO Podcast at eWebStyle, that way we can follow you back and network and do all of our social stuff. And if you listen to our podcast, you know we ask you just to do three things when you get a chance. One of them has three steps. Go on to iTunes, create an account, write, write a review. review. If you choose to, send an email, podcast at e-webstyle.com. Let us know that you just wrote a review. We'll make sure to get that on air. Actually, I've yep. got like four uh, iTunes reviews today. You notice no tears? I noticed no tears. I, Pretty I good. I noticed the no tears. I was hoping because, you know, after coming off a week, a little bit of sun, this, <laughs> it hurts to get a tattoo after all that. Next, you can go to our G Plus local page. If yep. you're SEO, you know how valuable that is. Please write us a review. We've made it incredibly easy to get to our, I don't even know what that was, uh, to get to our G Plus. That was a waterfall. <laughs> <kind of. laughs> Over a babbling brook. <laughs> yeah, all right. A lot of babbling. Uh, to, to get to our G Plus local page, all you need to do is go to e-webstyle.com slash Google Plus. Or slash Google Plus. Or slash G plus or slash g plus all of those will get you to yes. our g plus local page we ask you to do three things three on that things. page when you get to our g plus page first thing to do leave us a five star review and yep. when you do that then put us in a circle and also give us a plus one yep plus one that page next we have uh, uh stitcher get onto our stitcher yeah. page write a review you know better how to do that than us. <laughs> we really need, yeah, I'll do yeah, that. Let's I'm do that today. Download, yeah. yeah, I have it, actually have it on my phone and I'm sure it has to be done from your phone. Uh, that's just a, a, a guess. Look, there's lots of different ways. The other thing that you can do is just follow us. Uh, yeah. And there's a lot of ways to do that. Facebook.com slash eWebStyle. Twitter.com slash eWebStyle. YouTube.com slash eWebStyle. Instagram.com slash eWebStyle. All of those, you can keep track of the latest trends, 
things Keep us. Keep up with us, what we're posting, what we're tweeting, uh, the latest podcast, new information, tips, all kind of stuff. And sh- and it's a great way to share with us. Like we're, we'll be answering a question today from Facebook. From Facebook, so. yeah, that's a great way to, to re- get in contact. If you are a PHP expert or a WordPress expert and want to work with world-class experts, that's three experts, mm-hmm. all you got to do is submit an audio resume, 713-510-7846. Uh, we do have a referral program. You send an SEO client to us. They pay us. We pay you. Kind of simple. If you're looking for a free website analysis, maybe struggling with a client, uh, let us know. Just go to our website, e-webstyle.com. On that website, you will find a form somewhere. And now for one of our favorite segments, it's the algorithm cataclysm. Yeah, that, that's, that that's, shook that's, the Gatorade. That's, I know. That's a be man. Careful. That's a real cataclysm. <laughs> Dude, for real, for real. And so, uh, cataclysm earthquake. For those who understand yeah. the whole vibration. Yeah. Anyway, a <laughs> lot of algo cat today. A lot of algo cataclysm. A lot of things have happened in the last couple of weeks because we missed a couple of weeks. You know. Yep, that's so, right. So hi to those who ain't seen you in a while. We've right. been gone. Uh, we did 244 two weeks ago. Yep. And so, yeah, we missed one. By the way, our podcasts are getting caught up. We think that we'll be broadcasting on Friday, publishing on Monday or and Tuesday we'll be... in the next three weeks or so. Yeah, so. so we're almost there. But, yeah, so a lot of algo cats. So let's do the most important one first. Yep. Uh, so Google announced the other day that SSL protected sites, okay. sites that are on a secure soccer layer, will get a minor ranking boost. They wow. feel that it's that important. Matter of fact, the the statement from the uh, webmaster blog was that uh, they said the signal isn't stronger than having great content, but want wanted to strengthen uh, the signal to encourage website owners to switch from HTTP to HTTPS to keep everyone safer on the web. Interesting. So they're changing algorithms. They improve. They're adjusting the algorithm update to to help. You know, further promote a safer internet. And Did so, they say uh, how much, uh, how many of searches that would small, one percent? Yeah, yeah, that's what they said. But uh, I mean, that's cool. Yeah, I, I, I could dig it, kind don't of. know on a general website how SSL is that important. Yeah, I don't understand the need for, for it for yeah. seconds unless it's transactions happen. There are transactions yeah, that's a no brainer. By yeah. default, you should. They have should it. just block anyone who accepts transactional details not in an SSL. Exactly. That makes sense. I don't, anyway, so interesting. So, I don't I know, think, so do you think we should change our website to SSL? Um, I think um, I'm going to update our analytics on the date that that algorithm was released, and then monitor and see. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> and then little flag. Know, yeah, we'll flag it. Uh, uh, annotation is what that's called. Um, I actually start to talk analytics today. Right. We'll do that one next week. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'll do that, and right. we'll kind of see. And I'll frankly, I'll do it for some of our larger clients. Yeah, like multiple pages. Right. Of, you know, we'll kind of see how that goes. Uh, it may be necessary. Yeah. Uh, another algorithm update. Uh, this is kind of for mobile. Uh, so if you if you have uh, Adobe Flash okay. on your yeah. website, yeah. and you do a search on your mobile device, a Google search, uh, next to the results page, next to that listing on the results page. Google is going to put a notification, hey, this site might not work on your device. Wow. That's not what you want to see. Yeah. Even if you have the perfect answer, the perfect product, the perfect restaurant, the perfect location that people are looking for on a mobile device, I won't click, they won't click, nobody won't click. So this is where... If there's a message that says this might not not work. work. Yeah. I mean, you may click after you click all the other ones, (laughs) right? Like, ooh, no information, no information, let me try this one. Um... I'm just wondering, so we used to, on Flash websites in the early days of mobile growing, we would just have it go to a mobile website if we knew it on the mobile. HTML version that was no Flash. So is Google traversing that? So does Google mimic being a mobile device so that when it um, uh, uh, crawls your web page, it gets put to the mobile version, then it wouldn't have Flash on it. Like we just would remove Flash or put a static image or something more simple Mm -hmm. in that case. So... um, I've never known that Google has web crawlers that m- pretend to be uh, desk workstations and pretend to be mobile devices. Well, I think the results are just being displayed off of the off of, of the, the, the default pages. Itself. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, I don't know. Any, any interesting. If they did it right, and they tend to do things right, they should have like two crawlers or one crawler that does two things. If it mimics being. Uh, an Android or iPhone device, it would go one place, mm-hmm. and if it mimics just being a, a crawler, it would go to another place. 
Yeah. Another argument for responsive design exactly. if, they're, if they're not doing that. Exactly, because responsive kind of, unless you use flash and responsive, then. Well, then you just, you, then it doesn't matter if they went mobile or not, you're just, you, you, you so, got a yeah, you label next changes. to it. Your site may not be, this site may not be visible on your device. Mm -hmm. uh, so last algo update, this one was uh, late July. Uh, they knew this one got a name, another bird. A bird? Pigeon. Pigeon. Google Pigeon. Ooh, so we got, what do we got? The Penguin Panda. Smackdown. The Penguin. Pooped on by, uh, no, pan, Panda punched, Smackdown. Punched by Panda. Pooped on by the Penguin. Pooped in, maybe we gotta do Penguin Smack, right? And Pigeon Poop. Cause pigeons they poop, poop it's just people. poop. Yeah, I yeah. mean, so it's the so Pigeon Smack little poop, flapper. So the, the Google Pigeon update really improved the, the visibility of, of directories. And so now when you do a search, you'll see more more Yelp listings. You'll see more okay. different Yelp, uh, not Yelp, uh, YP is what I meant to say. Right. Uh, YP listings and other directories related to whatever industry it is that you're searching. Uh, so maybe you're in real estate. Okay. Kind of sucks for those people who are independent real estate agents who maybe have their own site because you will get outranked by Truly and Zillow right, and, right, right. and all these other guys who is already almost impossible to kind of outrank. Right, right. Those are essentially directories. Right, right. And they will outrank you. And so um, the Pigeon update um, improved the visibility of directories. So interesting. I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm guessing internal pages of directories. We'll That's have to, we'll have to my see. assumption as right. well. They didn't go into detail about what type of directory pages. Right. But I think those internal pages, let's say, for example, a plumber. Yeah, in, a specific a plumber has got links and uh, has filled out the profile and it actually mm -hmm. does well. And I could almost see how that could be a better result. Yeah, then it, then it given some, one site. Let's give a link to a list of reputable, reputable plumbers. In so that maybe it's more relevant in smaller markets where there may only be two plumbers who have a website and now, you know, there's yeah. 30 plumbers and they have a listing. So let's show those listings because that's actually that's relevant actually, information. Yeah, and Interesting. a better result than, than, than two listings and then whatever. And then a whole bunch of Wikipedia internal pages plumber. and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Makes sense. So, so that's your algo cat. Google Pigeon update. Pay attention to that. I think the key here is uh, which is already a part of our process is submitting to certain directories. Uh, follow that process. Get them. Make sure you're completely. listed there, yeah. <laughs> and so that way, it makes that directory does outrank you. At least you're listed there, In and there's yeah. a link to your site. Yeah. Um, then Adobe Flash, yeah, get rid of it. HTML5, CSS. You know, there are things you can do to, that you don't have to be restricted to, to Adobe Flash. Yep. And uh, and consider protecting your site, especially. If you offer commerce on there. Now, even if your console, I was thinking of earlier, even if your commerce doesn't, the transaction doesn't happen on the site. Let's right. say it's PayPal, right? You right, click right. the add to cart, then it's going to redirect you to PayPal secure server for the simple fact that you even offer e-commerce on there. Those type of sites may mm -hmm. be worth yeah. encrypting the whole site. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I can see that. For right. sure. No, All right, so we got a little bit of news. I just found some, some interesting things, a uh, little, just three pieces. <laughs> so 1.2 billion passwords oh, stolen, man. right? Um, when I saw that on the news, I was like, man, I wasn't if those were WordPress sites. Uh, well, yeah, some of them are. They have to be. Like, like, what some, else are they going to be? <laughs> yeah, some of them are. Well, they say they got big names. They say it got little names. Um, and they said that they, whatever information they got, and, and we have to believe some of it was a financial, they just were using the email, as I understand mm -hmm. it, the emails addresses as spam targets. <laughs> so, um, but, but the article I read said, don't worry about it. And I'm like, um, yeah, yeah sure. I think you keep up your password change policy and keep changing your keep password. Changing regularly <laughs> and i could understand them yeah and we talked about this you know about not going after financial information because then they they cr increase the liability of themselves yeah they increase the the chance the jail the jail, jail time <laughs> right exactly. if they go after the financial and information so they just go after emails so they can spam people and invade people's privacy through your name because you didn't change your password then uh yep yeah, they're gonna they're they're <laughs> gonna get away with it a lot longer, and and the cr the crimes will be less severe when if they get caught. If they get caught, exactly. So I thought this was cool. You know the 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 charger the the charging device on um uh, the, the netbooks for Apple like uh, Air Pro whatever mm -hmm. those little magnetic devices. Mm -hmm. Why isn't that on a phone? 
That's a good question. Right? I mean, it's a great question. So there's actually a Kickstarter program which you put a little adapter in your iPhone. It's targeting the iPhone. And then they have a magnetic attachment. And it's probably the same one from... From something else. Oh, that, that'll... that'll give you some chance to charge without being plugged in. Yeah, so so if you yank it out, it doesn't pull on your phone and break anything. It just falls out mm -hmm. and it's easy to set it place. Anyway, I just thought that was really smart. Um, and then this is- yeah, I love it. I mean, cause, um, cause sometimes I've been in a situation on my laptop, my MacBook where where that little Mac, I can just put the cord over there. And it, it, yeah. Click, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it clicks and, Believe it or not, that comes in a handy occasionally. I can so, see that. Or you're in a hurry, you just grab it, you got to run. You're like, oh, go oh, good. It's a Mac. I don't have to worry about it. Whereas if you're with a PC, you're like, oh, <laughs> it's all done. Um, that was cool. And then, and then there was one article. A guy used his cat to hack the neighborhood Wi-Fi. So basically, he just put some battery-powered Wi-Fi stuff on a, mm -hmm. on a cat collar. Let him loose. The cat just, you know, did what cats do. It came back, and he, and he said that it was surprising. We collecting data the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it was surprising how many open networks there were and easily hacked, like older uh, mm -hmm. technology, easy, easily hacked networks. And, and that what they did is they compared it to, in the old days, they used to dial random numbers mm -hmm. to try and find a computer that was unsecure. And then people will actually drive around town. Yeah, I remember that. Finding <laughs> Wi-Fi that are unsecure, and now yeah, your cat. Just send the cat to do it. Getting the cat to do it. All right, so we have a little bit of uh, a few reviews. This is this is pretty good. Um, review number one. It is five stars. From a, it says great podcast. It's from Hutch01. Informative, entertaining, and loaded with personality. This show is simply the best, and I love simply it. Simply the best. I can dig it. I've learned so much from these guys since I started listening a few weeks ago, and it's helped me deliver better results for myself and my clients. Thank you so much for all you guys do. Punch in the face. Mm. Yes, Hutch, mm. punch in the face to you. Thank you for punch that in review. Punch the face to you. Next, another five stars. This is great SEO info. I wouldn't miss this podcast explanation, exclamation mark. Yeah. It's not explanation. That's a different mark altogether. <laughs> this is, <laughs> that's the title only. Uh, Audible Flame is, uh, is who submitted Audible it. Audible Flame. I like that. Yeah, um, by the way, I saw this really cool. So there's some sort of pipe with holes in it and they'll run a, a flammable gas through it, mm -hmm. right? And so then you've got all these, the little holes have all these little flames and then they'll run sound waves through it and you'll see sound waves because the sound mm. waves will create different pressures that mm -hmm. push the gases at different, yeah. cool, oh, oh, so that's cool. cool. Yeah, that's so wild. then some dude did it 2D, right? So it's a square platform. I was watching it and the blue flame looked like LEDs and then every now and then a loud sound would come in and go, <laughs> big, 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 big. <laughs> just like, mm -hmm. that's cool. Anyway, yeah. maybe that's what he's involved with. I must confess that Audible it did. Flames. That's cool. I, it did take me two to three podcasts before I came around to the personality and style of this podcast. But now I'm completely hooked. Punch in the face, <laughs> reeling them yeah. in. Uh, Chris, so that's that's one of his first two podcasts. You heard a lot of. Zzz. <laughs> uh, Chris and Chuck are true masters of SEO and online marketing, and I've learned so much from them. Truly enjoyable, entertaining, and packed with relevant info. Your websites and web presence can only improve if you utilize this podcast marketing and SEO tips. Punch in the face, Punch Mr. Audible Flame. Audible Flame. Dude, if, if that's what, indeed what you do, like use music and sound to control flames and things like that, dude, send us a YouTube link, video, something. Yeah, well, I want to check, check that out, out again. Uh, next, another five stars. This is fun and informative. John from North Carolina. These guys have some fun while they're uh, why they update you on the latest news and trends in social media marketing. It's fast packed and full of good tips you can use today. Some people don't appreciate the irreverent PG-13 humor, but the content is worth the ride. That's just because we're in Texas. Yeah. So that was great. Punch in the face to John from North Carolina. Finally, we have a must. Of course, it's five stars. And this is by Reluctant Dawn. These two deliver the most up-to-date and relevant advice and information in the most fun way. They are smart, likable, and funny. Check out their YouTube channel as well. That's a good Check idea. Check it out, youtube.com slash uwebstyle. 
Yep, and they've been a tremendous help to my marketing efforts. Punch in the face, Reluctant Don. Hopefully you are no longer reluctant. reluctant. We have one more thing. We have a question from Facebook that we are going to answer. Let me get to this patif while you pull that up. Yep. Uh, so this Punch in the Face goes to uh, Abdi, A-B-D-I. This is a podcast listener. Uh, he called in and, um, and said he just started listening a few weeks ago. Already listened to a bunch of them. Said he was learning a lot and then actually wanted to get a quote from us. And so I took care of that and got the quote sent over. So, so punch in the face punch to you. Face. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for so your po- thank you for your support. Excellent. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So here's the question. This was submitted on Facebook. Adam Hamelian. Uh, I've gotten lost in tag management and AdWords. Mm. I find that I generate more web traffic from my Facebook page than from AdWords. Not, not that's not uh, uh, unexplainable. Makes right. Sense. Yep. Too many national sites in my local real estate business. We were just talking about that. Mm-hmm. Zillow. I think you mentioned that. Trul- Trulio. I think you mentioned that. I would like to develop a remarketing campaign without paying for the front end PPC ads. As my website is still in infant stage, AdWords won't remarket because I don't have a thousand site visits. Any thoughts or advice? Thanks. First, punch in the face and his Appreciate wh- your question. Yep. Appreciate you submitting that on Facebook. Yep. Um, so, so good situation to be in, actually. Kind of sucks that your site isn't really complete because I understand that. Um, I don't, this is the first time hearing about a limit, though, because yeah, you don't too. have a certain number of visits because it's remarketing. It's based on what your audience, what your list is, not necessarily how many visits you have. The only correlation there is that the more visits you have, then the faster your list grows. But once you have people on your remarketing list, then you can remarket to them yep. um, in AdWords. So I would definitely suggest doing that. And you're absolutely right. Uh, Facebook remarketing can be more effective and usually a lot cheaper than doing this through Google. Well, and so, and, and, well just to that point, I, he didn't mention that he's doing Facebook remarketing yet. S- he just said Facebook marketing versus AdWords. So, I thought he said remarketing. Yeah, so if you're uh, not, do Facebook remarketing. Do Facebook remarketing. That was that's the takeaway, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah get, go to Facebook, get the code, put it on your site because people visit Facebook more frequently um, and they're, they're, they'll see those ads more frequently. The difference I've noticed yeah. in between Facebook remarketing and let's say remarketing through Google AdWords on Display Network is people spend a lot of time on Facebook scrolling and getting lost in Facebookism. Right. <laughs> right. So, um, Facebookness. Have, <laughs> Facebookness. Yeah. So they have a higher opportunity to see your ads. Right. Because they're on Facebook for hours at for a time. For so much time. Exactly. Yeah. So I would do that. And my, my, I would sprinkle this one in for free as well. Um, consider placements. So if you're doing Google AdWords and you're working with remarketing and maybe your list isn't growing fast enough or maybe you don't have enough site visits or whatever it was, consider placements. Different from remarketing, but it still works in Google AdWords display network. Choose a couple sites that run AdSense ads that run that are in Google's um, 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 network and, and choose those domain names to place your ads there. Yep. And so you can locate who your target audience is, which we'll talk about in a minute, and at least find out where they're at and put those ads in front of them that way. So a little bit more targeted, um, and that way you have a l- little bit more c- control over who sees your ads. So it's not just display network ads. It's like, hey, I know that people who are visiting this website Zillow, potentially, I, I don't know. Yeah, those sites and, probably and, don't and, offer ads and, on them because they're kind of focused, but maybe a lot of those smaller directories, the other real estate blogs and or home and garden type deals like that in your area uh, would be a would be great sites great choices, to place, yep. uh, to place uh, ads on, definitely. Excellent. Great. Yeah, great question. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you. Let us know how that worked out for you. Great question. And I wanted to get, so his website is teamlamorinda.com. And it's a Hamelin, HamelinProperties.com, so that's interesting. Uh, the two different t- t- targets, I don't, I don't know. But we'll go with TeamLaMorinda.com. That's probably the area that yeah. he's servicing. Uh, punch in the face to you, Mr. Adam. Thank you for that question. We have completed the potatoes of our podcast. It is now time to get into the meat. Time to get into the meat. So or today, the meat. The meat, yeah. meat, meat. So uh, mm. how to write better copy while barely trying. <laughs> Six foolproof tips. Wait, 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 wait. How to write better copy while barely trying. That's yeah. 
six foolproof tips. That's so punch a five in the face. star. Yeah, punch, yeah, in, the punch face. in the face to Lisa. This is Lisa, Lisa Barona. We've Boom. covered her articles before. Wow. She normally gives pretty good content. Uh, so this was on Search Engine Watch. Um, and, and so pretty good article. Title got my attention. And so uh, let's dive in. Number one, which which I totally agree with, is something we kind of say consistently. Right. Right for your audience. Yep. She goes on to say, uh, great content is content written to make your customers feel smart. It solves their problems, addresses their needs, and does so in a way that makes sense to them. And I think this is key, writing for your audience. But more importantly, what well, I won't say more importantly, but the only way you can really write for your audience is to understand uh, who your audience is. And so she lists a few questions. You know, who are they, right? What do they want? What do they need? What pain are they experiencing? Um, how do they normally find solutions? These are the questions you should be asking about your audience uh, when you're trying to write for them. I added a couple more questions. Um, how do they look? I think this is a good question to know. How does your typical audience look? Uh, and and the, I think the key here to separate is your audience is different from who's buying from you, right? You want to make sure that you're targeting your purchasing people. You'll probably get a lot of visits, a lot of views from people who may not necessarily be in a decision-making process. They may be researching. They may just be just surfing the web, or they may be there for a different reason other than the purchase. So I want you to write for those people who spend money. How do they talk? Right, you want to make sure you're speaking their language. You want to make sure you're using the same verbs and nouns and descriptors uh, that they're used to, and not things that that may not be applicable to them. So, so she says, write for your audience. I'll say, know your audience, <laughs> and then write for them. You have to yep. understand who you're targeting and and why you're targeting. I was talking to a client yesterday, and uh, we were we were going through the our kind of creative call questions. Right. And so she didn't really understand why I was asking all these questions. Right, you're saying. And I began to share with her. I said, well, because you target females, baby boomers, they're around a certain age, and, and this is what you offer. So we don't want to create a site that's full of earth tones and hard lines that's going to really stir them away. Really edgy here. Yeah, right. we want to go with something maybe curved edges, soft colors, things like that, because pastels. That's your, yeah. Because that's, that's your target. Yeah. And so she would have like, oh... And so, so understand who your, who your target audience is. Yeah. Number two, and this is key, we're talking about how to write better copy. This is copy on your site. And frankly, this stuff is likely applicable to print and other things as well. Yeah. Um, master the opening. I yeah. like that. How do you open this article? She says, the purpose of your lead sentence is to get someone to read the rest of what you've written. Right. And, and that's important. And so a good, she lists some tips on how you could get to your lead sentence. Maybe it's a personal experience, a bold statement. A problem that needs a solution. It's a great way to st start by stating the problem, especially if it's a problem that majority of your of your of your audience has. Right. Maybe sixty percent, seventy percent of your audience had the same problem. Address that problem with the first line. Ouch! Just got burned by an SEO company. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and then they, they, I will keep reading. Yeah. Right. Um, I'll say address an emotion. So like you just said, yeah. ouch. That's a good yeah. way. Uh, so maybe maybe it's you know I'm gonna save you time and money by once you read this. Okay, you've gotten my attention to go to the to finish this paragraph yeah, at least. Exactly. And so so definitely address an emotion. That emotion could be fear, could be love, could be could be whatever. You know, could be nervousness, could be anxiousness. Address that emotion because um, if you can tap into that emotion, then you've got their attention and they'll become engaged. Uh, number three, write about what's at stake. Just a just a note on number two, mm -hmm. the first sentence and and actually the title. I don't know if she covers the. Well, title. she said the title should be, be, be part of grabbing. that first. Sentence. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I, I heard once, and actually from Brad Sugars, that 80 percent, 80, 80 times, the number of people will read your title versus your article. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make your title strong enough to try and get people to read the article. Yeah, and that's what she was talking about really after that. She's yeah. kind of assuming that you wrote a great title yeah, yeah. and they've clicked and now they're at your article. So keep them going. Like, don't don't exactly. give up at the title. And you got to have boring. an important headline. I've also read, <laughs> give the important stuff first. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, let's build up and then the really key thing will be at the end. Well, a lot of people want to know the the why. I don't so want to you, get to the end. <laughs> so know. a lot. So you just tell them what you're gonna. What's the summary gonna be? And then have that teaser into the mm -hmm. rest of the article. Even if you tell them the end story without telling them the end story. Yeah. You know, by the end of this, you'll know how to do this, 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 and that. Yep. 
Good framing, yeah. Yeah, you know, and then then you outlined it, and so now, and then when you get to the end, you tell them, okay, I told you you would learn this, 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 this and that. You learned this, 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 and that. If you want to know more about this, 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 this. <laughs> exactly, contact us, or you close it with a CTA or whatever that is. Uh, so number three, she says, uh, write about what's at stake. She goes on to say, it, instead, tell them what's at stake and the benefit they'll experience if they buy your product and just as important what they'll miss out if they don't buy it. And the example she gives is say, if you're selling a new coffee pot, it's not about how quickly the pot will brew your coffee, it's about how fast the coffee means more morning time spent, you know, doing what you need to do. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's highlighting the, the benefits of a of faster having. faster coffee maker. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so I'll say this is kind of similar to what we just said, find those common problems. Maybe in this case, the problem is you need more time. Right. Right. Maybe whatever your product is solves a, sp a specific problem. So instead of writing content about your product, write content about the problem and how your product can solve that problem. Yeah. And then that's what speaks to people's pain. That's what creates an engaged visitor. That's what makes them click the links you have embedded in your content because they want to figure out how else can this product solve whatever problem I may be having. Number four, she says, uh, present a complete story. And I like this one. So for an example, scene one, um, look at this cute puppy. Right. right? Scene two, the puppy. Watch this, cute, watch this cute puppy gener gather Wi-Fi information around your neighborhood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> scene number two, uh, the puppy's at an animal shelter. Right. Right. Scene number three, the puppy will die if you don't adopt it. <laughs> And scene number four, you rescue the puppy. Right? And so what she You're did, the hero. You're yeah. the hero. She creates this framework. And so um, and I, I get the concept of what she's saying. And so I'll say, you know, present content in a way that really leads to the conversion. At the right. end of the day, they want you to go and, and, and adopt this puppy. And so they create this story showing you, you know, that puts you in a, an emotional state. And it shows you what could happen unless you save the day. And so I think you present your content, especially if this is content that supports a service or supports a product that you offer, you present it in that same way. And um, we have a client, they do, uh, they do uh, AC heating and plumbing, right. right? And so one of the things we're doing with their content strategy is for example, the latest blog post we sent out focused on a specific problem that the, um, that the um, uh, ductless AC units service. Right. You know, address, the fact that, address, yeah. that they address the fact that it's an older home and you can't just put a word duct, duct everywhere air yeah. to get AC in this room. So you go to ductless unit. So we wrote a blog post talking about that. Right. The bottom of that blog post was a link to the ductless AC page on their site where there's videos, where there's the CTA and everything else. And so that's constructing a path that we want users to take that eventually lead to the conversion. Right. Now they've addressed their problem, then they click a link and they've seen a video on how it can help and it leads them down the path of getting the consultation and eventually getting a new installation done. So, so present the complete story. Um, number five, write, then edit, then write again. <laughs> Makes perfect sense because you will likely not get it right on the first try. Yeah, I think write and pressing send not a good, not a good, <laughs> not a good idea. Uh, she says, uh, commit to your vomit draft. <laughs> awesome, Lisa. I like it. Awesome, Lisa. Commit to your, to your vomit draft. That's the first draft you use and spill out every idea, every phrase, every benefit, every idea you want. Just spill it out. Don't stop and edit is the key here when you're doing that first draft. Just keep writing, 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 get it all out your head, then edit. And then what I would say after that point, I wrote down, allow other team members to review it. Yeah. After you've got your vomit draft out the way and you've come up with your first rough draft, don't just hit post, don't just hit send, don't hit publish, you know, don't hit update. Instead, won't you print it or, or send it over to, to Chris or whoever on right. your team right. and let them review it. Yeah. Allow them to make edits and updates, come through it one more time, you know, and then it's probably it. safe to post. And there's a there's a great study that I always that I really like. They had actually created this was for generals in in the army, and they had created a war scenario. And this group mm -hmm. who was doing the test, and they had identified I think it was a hundred key components of this war scenario, mm -hmm. and they gave it to each of like ten different generals who wrote a report about it, and all of them came back with a report that got about thirty of the one hundred items, so about thirty percent. Mm -hmm. So. So then they took each, they gave one report from one to the next, mm -hmm. right? So ostensibly, if you just add, if, if you were, 
If you had 30 and you're reading a report of somebody else's 30, you and, and sh- ours is probably only got 10 in common. Right, mm-hmm. so you should be around 50. Mm-hmm. What happened was the new perspective of the other person opened, allo- up. opened up everything. So they ended up coming out with like 85, mm-hmm. 90% of the key components because of that new perspective. So uh, get that new perspective. Yeah, definitely. Don't take for granted easy resources. Like, it's something as simple as asking a quick question to somebody else about whatever you're writing about. They may give you an answer that that may not be the answer to your question, but it could spark a whole new train of thought that uh, addresses other questions and and helps your article become more complete, more rounded. Um, So definitely bounce ideas off others, share them, and that way when you do post, you put out a piece of content that's that's worthy, that has a higher likelihood of being shared, has a better likelihood of, of getting ranked Right. It has more value yep. um, and more resources. Um, and the last one, number six, uh, she says, uh, cut the jargon. <laughs> and, and, I, and I agree. Sometimes, you know, we get, you know, you get in the position where you're writing copy yeah. and you're trying to get a certain, you know, word count. And so, uh, you know, you, <laughs> matter of fact, she wrote, uh, the only thing your state of the art, groundbreaking, holistic, results oriented, growth product is doing is losing everyone reading your copy. (laughs) As humans, we don't take to that. And you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, it don't matter how many adjectives you put in there to describe this product. It don't mean nothing if you haven't told me how it can help me. And so, um, so, so get rid of the jargon. I will say, be careful to not exclude, uh, and I wrote this, uh, different variations of the product. Some people can't confuse the jargon. When it's not, and in fact, it could be what the what that visitor needs to actually see in order to get them to convert. Right. For example, the same client, right? We're talking ductless ACs. They're called ductless ACs. They're called uh, mini split ACs, and they got several other names. And so, when those names, that's not jargon. Those are actually variations of the product name. Right. That users tend to use. So definitely include those in your in your in your content in your post. But the, the best duck list, the, 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 and all of those other adjectives that just fluff really, yeah. uh, kind of get rid of it. I think there's a famous author who once wrote an apology which says, please excuse the length of my, of my letter. Had I more time, it would have been shorter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we ain't got time for that, is what that <laughs> means. So, so punch in the face to uh, Lisa, Lisa Baroni. Uh, uh, how to write better copy. Dean, what's up, Dean? How to write better copy while barely trying. Six p- foolproof tips. A uh, great article. We'll post this on Facebook. It'll be on our blogs and everything else. So, so hit us up. Tell us what you think. Thank you so much. Um, do we have any what? Oh uh, yeah, we do. Got a little what news? Right. Do we have a little what news? <clears throat> what? Yeah. So this what goes to the Union Street Guest House. Okay. They're in Hudson, New York. Okay. It's a hotel, right? right? Guest house. So they find couples five hundred dollars for every negative review posted online by them or any of their guests. They do a lot of weddings there. So if you go there, you have a wedding, you don't have a good experience, and so you go to G Plus and you write a negative review, they're gonna bill you five hundred bucks. Can they do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's why they're in my what news. I don't know if you can do that. And your guests. Maybe you're a guest at my wedding. I so, had a great so, time, but you, your suck stayed. Your hot water was out. You had a bug in the bed, whatever. And so you wrote a negative review. And you get... I get fined. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, think about it. There <laughs> are contracts <laughs> that you can make with a business and personal contracts which uh, require you to keep quiet. Right, like if you have a, some sort of settlement and it says, "Great, we're going to settle with you for yeah, hundred thousand dollars," but if you ever tell anyone, then that, we want that all that, back and some. So, they, they, you might be able to put that contractually into something, but man, that's a lot of bad press. <laughs> Come on, man! Yeah, it's like you go find me for because your service sucked. Wow! Really? Then, so yeah. Uh, Kicking the shins I to guess you that, guys at I guess the Union that's the, Street Guest House. I guess that because remember a while back we, we talked about how people are going in and saying, I need an upgrade or I'm going to write you a bad review. Right? So this is this is the opposite of that. <laughs> this is, yeah, you better Remind enjoy me. your stay regardless if you don't enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as far people. as the internet knows, you had the best time available. Yeah, so Man, that's uh, that's the that's, that's yeah, definitely yeah. what. 
All right, well, you have tuned in to the most popular SEO podcast, internet marketing podcast on iTunes. That is because of all you all. Thank you guys so much for tuning Thank in. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the great reviews that you've sent in. Um, follow the directions at the beginning. I don't need to belabor them. If you can, add us another review. This has been podcast number 245. This is broadcast live in Houston at 5999 uh, West 34th Street. Sweet 106. <laughs> yeah. 77092. I don't even know if that matters. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris. I'm Charles Lewis. Bye bye for now. All right.